Hey, and welcome back to Game Talk. I'm your host, Sam and Mia, and today I'm joined by Connor. Hey, guys. And Mike. Hello. And earlier this year, I think July, we did an episode talking about all of the fall games that we're anticipating. Well, fall is here. We're in mid-October. We've played a good chunk of these games, and the other half of them are basically imminent. So I think we're going to just kind of go over the fall deluge of games. What are we playing? What are we looking forward to? Obviously, we're still playing Sparking Zero, but a lot of stuff is releasing around now as well. So I'll just hand it over to you guys. They're kind of killing me because I feel like Satisfactory for me was the first big one to drop. And I didn't even come close to finishing it before Zelda came out. And yeah, then I didn't Satisfactory even come close for me. <laughs> I'm only like eight hours into Satisfactory. Yeah, I've barely, barely done a anything toe. in Satisfactory. And it's still a game I regularly think about going back to. But again, it's just that period of time where there's so many shiny objects and you can't really play all of them. I envy you a little bit too because you're early enough that there's not too much for you to forget. But my factory is a very oh, no. complicated yeah. beast that does not have documentation. Yeah, so, there's no there's no documentation. Connor didn't put up. Yeah, uh, I didn't put up signs or anything. Yeah, can you I actually tag, do that? You can. Yeah. Yeah. I tagged stuff on the map, but like it's smart to label what your throughput is on things on any given belt so you know how much of a resource you have to spend and stuff. I didn't do any of that. Oh, I don't yeah. think I have signs unlocked yet, honestly. I don't think I ever did quartz stuff. Yeah. I windows, so I don't know. But yeah, that's going to be a nightmare to go back to. And I don't want to start the game over because it's so long. I mean, I'm like 30 or 40 hours in or whatever. I don't want to start over. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's similar because uh, you and I are software engineers, Connor, just coming back to a piece of code you wrote like a year or two ago. Yeah. And it's just like, well, what was I thinking back then? <laughs> it's exactly Who the was same. I back then? Yeah. yeah, who was this man? Get blame, the, the old <laughs> yeah. get blame command. Yeah, I don't yeah, think I'll that's... have that problem when I revisit it because I'm still at the point where everything I can kind of figure out just looking around geographically. I'm like, okay. This is where this stuff is. This is where that stuff is. And it's not yet complex enough to for me to kind of lose track. I also seem to remember you saying that it was about time to tear down your starter it was, stuff. Yeah. And yeah. So you're you're still in a pretty good spot. I, I am not. I am in a quite the pickle, I would say. Because I, I also I have two worlds running as well. I have my world single player and then I have my world with my friend Antonio that are not terribly far off from each other at this point because me and Antonio played a little more. Nice. And that's probably how I'll actually finish the game is playing in burst. Yeah. Win, which is fine. That that puts less burden on me. But I... It's skipping ahead a little. Factorio comes out in like October 21st. That's in six days. Oh, wow. Less than a week. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be huge. Although Factorio can be beaten more quickly at least Vanilla Factorio can be beaten much more quickly than Satisfactory. But I don't know how if that's going to be how that plays out because the mod that Space Age is based on, Space Exploration, is a two to 400 hour experience <laughs> on the low end. Yeah. What? Those numbers so, just don't even make sense. It, where you can beat Vanilla Factorio in like eight hours and that's not even a speed run. That's That's a reasonably quick run. Although your first run will probably be closer to 100 hours. Well, I was going to say, it's if you already games. know what you're doing, it'll... Yeah. But, you know, I don't, so... It's, yeah, it's that sort of... My first run in Factorio was something like 80 hours, I think. And now I, I can beat it much faster than that, closer to 10, if I'm not even being particularly quick about it. Yeah, it's that kind of game. But that, I, I just... I have so many games I want to finish. I'm, I'm getting to the point with Sparking Zero now. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero that just came out. I think it's ready to go on the back burner. I, I think I've played my fill of it for the most part. I'm ready to do other stuff <laughs> as well. Yeah, for me, though, I'm, I'm still playing Sparking Zero every day. I'm really enjoying myself. I think I have around 30 hours in it. And I finished like half the campaigns. I think I did Goku's, Vegeta's, Gohan's, and Goku Black's. I'm and at around, yeah, 25 hours. And really enjoying the what ifs, by the way. The what ifs are so like good. everyone has at least one to two. Some some of them even have three 
kind of fleshed out what if stories and i'm very much enjoying them really liked vegeta's in the cell saga i really liked gohan's in super as well thought those were pretty well done i haven't Um, seen gohan's yet and it's really satisfying as a long-term dragon ball fan to to get these kind of old worn stories in fresh ways did you say you played Frieza's yet? I've not touched Frieza's yet. Oh, Frieza's is brilliant. Uh, Frieza, through a, through a turn of events, I won't tell you what how, how you get there, but Frieza gets to pick people for the Tournament of Power oh, in his story. That's fun. And it changes a lot in, in really fun ways. And th- there's like a lot of options. There's There's four different people you can choose to take to the Tournament of Power with you, and each of them is a different story. Yeah, so, yeah. And I think no. that's where Sparking Zero is at for me. I think I'm done with ranked for now. I got to the point where I was winning more than I was losing. And that was just kind of enough for me to not need to right. play it anymore. I got Justified, good. Justified, yeah. Yeah. I'm not using like S tier characters. I'm like A and B tier. Uh, Kid Boo, Master Roshi, and Super Frieza. So I can go gold. Master Roshi is like one of the top ranked choices, by the way. Oh, is he really? The highest ranked players all run Master Roshi. <laughs> Is is it Allegedly. because of after image strike? Probably. He's, probably. Yeah. He's just but, funny. He doesn't have that much health, so I didn't feel like it was it's not like a Super Saiyan for Gogeta type character. Right, yeah. I'm running in ranked the five members of the Ginyu Force, and yeah. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun with that. And I like you, I'm winning more than I lose. And it's just really funny to me when I'm Goldo and I'm going toe to toe with like Broly or something. That's how it feels with like Doing a Master Roshi versus Jiren feels so good. <laughs> yeah. And also, I just want to shout out, I love the little dialogues in this game that you wouldn't expect, right? When you pick two yeah. characters, they fight at the beginning, they say something to each other. And oftentimes, if the character has no relation, it's just some generic line. But if they do have a relation, they say a special line of dialogue. And some of them are quite surprising, right? So I fought Hit as Goldo. And they had a special interaction. <laughs> because they both stopped time. Yeah, Hit was like, oh, yeah. you also have time powers. I was like, no way they thought of this. That's, That's so crazy. Funny. They There's one with uh that I liked, Garlic Jr. versus Zamasu, where oh, wow. Garlic Jr. says, oh, you also wished for immortality. And uh, Zamasu is something like, you've destroyed the natural order by being an <laughs> immortal mortal or something yeah it's just such a hypocrite See, i love that this is it's such like a small niche thing that only like dragon ball super fans would put in their game like the people yeah. who made this game are just the biggest dragon ball fans uh but yeah going back to the story modes really quick gohan's in particular like my there was a moment where my jaw hit the floor i was like i can't believe they're doing this and then Vegeta's just sort of made me smile. Like it was very heartwarming, the direction they took Vegeta's character and his yeah. relationships. And have you had a chance to play any split screen? Yes, I have. Yeah. It's pretty it's fun. I don't think I thought the hyperbolic time chamber being the only map was going to be annoying, but it's actually super fun. It's I didn't fun. care yeah. at all. I mean, part of me wishes like I could punch someone through a building, but it's still the game is just so much fun to play. Like, just picking it up and playing it, you you sort of forget everything else and just enjoy Absolutely. the power fantasy. There is a mod on PC to allow the other maps, but I haven't installed it because I'm afraid to get banned and ranked. Yeah, I, I've been seeing a lot of mods on PC that yeah. add yeah. quite a few cool things. Uh, well, Gohan that too. Blanco. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, that was inevitable. Like, that was there week one, a yeah. few days after launch. But uh, I also want to say, the latest thing I checked out were the world tournament modes, and I was having oh, a lot of so fun, fun. fun with those as well. I mean, did it's you just, play them online or offline? I was playing them offline. I did Me see too. you could do them online, and it's I, not I'm very not, fun. I was gonna say, do you have to like watch everyone's matches? You don't. That you. So you that, just that's wait? A se- It's toggleable. Yeah, whether or not you have to. Okay. But the thing that sucks about it is, at least when I looked at it, there are only two lobbies to join. Like. I don't know if it was regional in some weird way, because I can't imagine there were only two groups in the entire world playing it. Or maybe I had my network settings set that it was only showing good connections. But even that, it's surprising to me that there were only two, just not a lot of players that I could join in it. So I don't think I'm ever going to touch it online, especially when the offline was so fun. Yeah. No, it's just uh, the whole tournament structure to me is always, I- I've always been drawn to that as evidenced by the multiple tournaments I force into these uh, <laughs> podcast episodes as well. 
But all of that started from Dragon Ball. The Tenkaichi Budokai was always just such a an alluring thing to me as a kid. A tournament of the strongest fighters. And it's, they just... It's the second arc, isn't it? Yeah, think, yeah. In, yeah. In Dragon Ball, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's always been a big part of Dragon Ball like throughout. We're talking like Dragon Ball all the way up through Super. There's always tournaments that's like fundamental to the DNA of Dragon Ball. And well, they just no captured that. there's no real tournament in Z. The Cell Games is only Cell Games, two yeah. Fights. And the tournament at the very end of Z as well. And, and yeah, they, in, in the, the Blue Saga. Only, the Blue yeah, Saga as well. Yeah. They, they, after Dragon Ball, they all like... Because Toriyama realized he couldn't just do the same structure over and over again. So the tournament started getting interrupted. They started, you know, changing like Cell Games, all of that. Weirdly, the filler Otherworld tournament is actually pretty Yeah, good I enjoyed Z. that as well, yeah. yeah. But and I love how like in this game there's all of those tournament options. You can do like yes. a traditional martial arts tournament where ring outs apply. Ring outs go... are so funny, dude. <laughs> it's yeah, so funny to just yeah, they're hilarious to be playing a weak character that happens to have a downward smash and you just instant ring out somebody. Yeah, and then you have the cell games, which is kind of like a no holds barred kind of anything goes tournament. You have like Otherworld Tournament, which is more random focused. Yamcha games, which are like pure random. And then you also have like Tournament of Power. So there's so many different tournaments you can play with. And you can also create your own tournament, which is something that's really cool. Not something I expected. Have you played a Tournament of Power? I think that's the one I haven't tried yet. They're really cool. I don't like it because you have to make a team. And I don't like teams without DPS. If there was an option where you could only do 15 DPS, I think I would play it. Or 15 DP, whatever right, it was. Right, DP. The point, yeah, dragon points. Uh, or destruction points, I forget. Either way, I don't like having to pick a team, but the Tournament of Power is really cool because it's on the Tournament of Power stage and there is ring outs and you can't fly. Yeah. And you don't fully heal in between matches. Yeah, I love that. That's so cool. So cool. Like, it feels right out of the anime. <laughs> yeah. Man, this this really is the perfect Dragon Ball game. I... Again, I said it last week, this was the game I was looking forward to as a kid. So I'm still having fun playing it every day. Obviously, like you, like my time with it is kind of slowing down. But I think my prediction is going to hold true that it's just going to be the game that I will pop in consistently in the in the weeks and months to come and just play a match or two and then turn it off. It's uh, It's so much fun to do that, just to get that quick hit of Dragon Ball energy. We joked a lot about it being game of the year this year. And I know I've said this. I said this about Satisfactory. I think I said it about Helldivers. I've said it quite a few times this year. But it's one of my front runners for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely in the conversation for game of the year for me. I can't yeah. think of another game that has brought me such simple joy. Yeah, Just I agree. Every yeah. second playing it, I'm well, every second playing it that I'm not furious about getting my butt kicked by a fusion. So that's true, but also you genuinely do get better at this game the more you play it. I mean, absolutely, you feel like yourself getting way better, like more powerful. Uh, and a large part of that is the difficult AI in the story mode too. Some of the AI fights in the story mode are really hard. And you really don't have any choice other than to just get better. Have to get good. Uh, yeah. Get get really comfortable with all the countering options and all of that. So. I, I'm certainly way better at Tenkaichi, like including Budokai Tenkaichi 3, than I ever was playing Sparking Zero. Yeah. So. Oh, I mean, once you master the super counter, you're you're crazy. Like, yeah. And I've, I've played a few people that have mastered the super counter now. It's so hard to master, though, because it's timing based it's and especially yeah. online, and online with, yeah, with yeah, the variable lag. Then how do you consistently do that other than mash it, which is what I do. I just kind of mash it. No, I realized how much I didn't. I didn't realize how bad the lag was online until I started playing uh, split screen and realized how much oh, easier yeah. the timing was to nail when. Yeah, I mean, in story variable. mode and like world tournament, all of that, like it's it's very I just it's much easier to. to nail. Yeah, I, I don't even have to use the super counter in any of the story mode stuff I've done so far. I just haven't needed it. Mm. Uh, I've definitely been using it. Yeah, yeah. I. But again, that wasn't even like part of my repertoire prior to this game. And it was in Tenkai it was in, 3. I didn't know. Yeah, it it's just That's like not crazy. that commonly used, I think. Yeah. Especially because yeah, like I mean, the level adding of play rank... in Tenkai 3 wasn't that high. Because yeah. like the AI wasn't bad and there was no online. So there was nothing to really push the game. Adding a ranked online changes everything. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I hope I hope this game continues to get updates. I hope we get a Dragon Ball story. I mean, there's through. literally an update, like a patch coming today. I don't know what it's going to oh, do. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, the game was down for maintenance today. Or, like, not down, but, like, the online modes were not available. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, I'm super happy with my time with this game. I'm very much looking forward to all the characters that are still coming, because there's a lot of them. We're going to get Daima characters. We're going to get superhero yeah. characters. And then further the unannounced. Of- I did watch the first episode of Daima and it was interesting. It's dog water, dude. The The animation, the reanimated animation was very stuff nice. from Z was gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. But that it's villain. It's just, uh, I don't mm-hmm. understand. Like, I kind of get the feeling, and I, I know this isn't related to games, but just indulge us. <laughs> I get the feeling Toriyama yearns for the days of Dragon Ball. And... You kind of got that through GT because GT for the longest time was kind of adventure focused. Yeah. And I I think he's attempting that again with Daima. And granted, it's only been one episode. The first episode just basically right. sets up the plot. So it's just a kn- really bad first episode. It's all exposition. I was actually shocked that how little of like Goku and Ko we got in the first episode. Yeah. That was a huge weird like that was a weird decision to me. Yeah. So it was just like, how long are we gonna get gonna spend with these new weirdos? And the answer is thirty minutes. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was kind of crazy, but I but think I, once the focus shifts to Goku and everyone, I th- I enjoyed it more, and I'm sure the focus yeah. will kind of remain there going forward. At least I hope. I hope so. I think it could still come out on top, but it was just a remarkably bad first episode. I also just don't really. Why is it set when it's set? If they're gonna weaken the characters anyway, why is it set before Super? I don't understand. Yeah, I don't it's know if they're set gonna do something after like Boo and before Super. It also so retcons, I don't know. Like it retcon like Kibito Kai. Yeah, Kibito Kai. I don't remember if Kibito Kai is in Super. I don't know if this was explaining that. I don't remember. It's a. Uh, I don't know. It's it's just it's kind a, of a weird a show. It's still yeah. like on. Un- I'm still not even sure if it's gonna be canon or not because of the weird things they're doing. Or maybe yeah. it's like an alternate kind of story like but, GT. But I don't know. now we have three post-Z stories. And I yeah. I don't know. If you wanted to do more Dragon Ball, there's like four years between Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z that he could have done stuff with. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> I don't know. I guess you don't get Vegeta that way, though, and Vegeta's a fan favorite. Yeah, there, there's just way more characters to play with if you go later. Yeah. And I, the relationships... Not in this. The relationships between the characters in Dragon Ball are interesting. Like Toriyama did a great job of setting everyone's characters up. Like I I love seeing Piccolo on screen interacting with Goku's family. That's just such a fun dynamic. Vegeta has a fun dynamic with everyone. And that's that was only accomplished through years of like character development. So Yeah. It is what it is. Uh I, I'm sure Daimo will pick up. For me though, like I, I don't think I was as down on it as you. I was just happy to see more Dragon Ball. But I do agree with you. I was just like, okay, where where are we going? Please show Goku now. Bored. I was bored. <laughs> Please show man. Goku. I don't want to see like this villain. He's a little clown man. I could. It's beat like him. a. He's another peel off. Like know? I could he, beat him with my bare hands. Like he's just some guy. Like, I don't know. I don't need Goku to do it. Toriyama has this fashion fascination with like the emperor peel off archetype. But yeah, here we are with another kind of joke dwarf character kind of. Well, I, it was some stuff I've seen is that they're trying to just do GT again. That's yeah, that's the vibe I'm getting. That's the vibe I'm getting. And so maybe, maybe it could be okay. But the the interesting stuff about GT was like the penalty for overusing the Dragon Balls, and I'm not seeing that stuff yet. And Plus, also, Pan but we've being, already got a cool. new set of Dragon Balls. Too. Yeah, a new set. There's yeah, <laughs> Demon Which World Dragon sure, Balls. Yeah, which is like okay. <laughs> Yeah, Whatever. we'll we'll see. And I and did really like the kind of it, it is a retcon, but also the lore reveal that Namekians are demons, that's, and they, that's like a retcon retcon because yeah, Piccolo because originally, originally they demon. were demons, and then they yeah. were like, oh no, they're aliens, but now they're demons who became aliens, I suppose. Yeah, they settled Namek, and yeah, also but uh, yeah, I kind of I, I think that's a fun lore tidbit, and I hope that me gets too. explored more. I like that, and and it has me going through. Past Dragon because they said anyone with pointy ears is a demon. Yeah, right? peel off. <laughs> yeah, peel off. Uh, doesn't Tapion have? Well, he's not Tapion's not canon. So yeah, I guess that but doesn't mean well, anything. the the Kai Supreme Kai, right? Like yeah, and, well, yeah, and but, one of the demons yeah. is like Supreme Kai's brother. So I don't really know what's going on there. Yeah, what the lore implications of that are. But I wonder if it's a translation thing because they kept calling um when they wanted to use mortal in Dragon Ball Super they used human. 
Yeah, mortal ning- ningen, right? Like that's yeah. the word for human, mortal, kind of. Anyway, but we should probably get back to yeah. Video we, games. Let's get back to video <laughs> yeah. games. So yeah, so let's don't indulging let's, us. Let's move past the the Dragon Ball discussion. I do want to point out. So Astrobot, we already talked at length about that, but obviously that came out like about a month ago. One of my favorite games this year in contention for my game of the year. I think enough said about that. Uh, another game I was interested in was the Until Dawn re-release. Oh, apparently it's And it's I'm very terrible. upset by what this ended up being. So this is a remake. They they redid all the assets. They even added some additional story. They changed the ending of the game to kind of imply that there's going to be a sequel. And They shouldn't have done those things. Well, no, the biggest thing they shouldn't have done is that they just changed... The atmosphere and color palette of this game, which are two of the biggest strengths. Because, like, I don't know if you guys ever played Until Dawn. It's one of my favorite PS4 games. I and never played it, but I've seen some videos. It's It kind of started the whole trend of, okay, you've got this cast of teenagers, and you're basically playing through a horror movie, and the story can shift based off your decisions. Until Dawn was really kind of the first one to pull it off to the degree it did. And it was a great game. It was a game that I played many times with different groups of friends and family. And each time it was a little different because different decisions were made. The whole point of the game was like the butterfly effect thing and like how your decisions kind of spiral out of control. So obviously the remake has all this, but they changed the cinematic presentation, right? Because like until dawn, the original had fixed camera angles. And so at times it felt really claustrophobic, which made sense because it was framed as a horror movie. So you're walking through the woods and you can't really shift the camera uh, Mm -hmm. because that's the shot they want you to look at. They want you to feel a certain way. In this game, they take that away and give you a third person camera in all the scenes. So it's just like a feels like a generic like third person walking game. We've seen they're making the exact same mistakes um, in the original Silent Hill remake where they thought that the fog was a technical limitation, which it was, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. The, the right. third person camera probably did, the, the limited camera probably was a technical limitation as well on PS4 to boost frame rates, but it also was an integral part of the feeling of the game. Absolutely, and, yeah. So this, it, ha- this happened, and also a, a big part of Until Dawn is like the oppressively dark color palette. This game is full of like blacks and blues, and it all takes place during night and it feels scary and isolating. Now, the first huge chunk of this game takes place in the afternoon and into sunset. So you're actually playing a chunk of this game with daylight and it changes the whole vibe, the tone setting of the game. And that's just not good. Like, why did you make those changes? If you're going to remake a game, you have to stay faithful to it as we're going to talk about with Silent Hill 2 here in a bit. But... They really miss the mark with this Until Dawn remake. And not only that, it's riddled with bugs and it crashes. And I'm like, guys, what was the point of this? Like, why did you do this? There was a perfectly functional... I mean, I can't think of anything wrong with the original Until Dawn. Other than that it's not in 4K. It's just not... It's just... I guess the the barrier for remake now is... Was it released more less than, what, seven years ago? Eight years ago? I mean, we yeah. saw it was an early, yeah, it was an early PS4 game. Like, but let was me it let a me game just that was released last gen. It needs a remake, and ex- well, yeah, that's kind of what it seems like. But I'll tell you what Sony is doing. Sony is doing these kind of unnecessary remakes because they're tying into their multimedia franchises. Until Dawn is getting a movie. That's probably why this game exists, right? Until Horizon get a movie. Horizon's getting like a Netflix or Am- I think it's Netflix. Yeah, a Netflix show. That's why the Horizon Zero Dawn remake exists. Uh, I bet we're going to see a God of War 2018 remake because there's a God of War Amazon show as well. So it's really, and that's why we got a Wait, Last of a Us God 1 of War, remake. There's a God of War 2018 remake I, would be entirely unnecessary. I'm sorry. But, but that's what I'm saying. I think they're doing it just so, because they know after watching the show, there will be an influx of new fans that are going to be looking for these games. And what, I would argue... What you're, happened I mean, to game development, man? What happened I would argue to that like you can just play the existing versions of these games. They're perfectly fine. They're really good, in fact. So I don't really see the need to 
create PS5 versions for of everything just because you have a show, but I think that's what Sony's doing because of the shows. Remember when we released games that like were creative and not the same game every three years? I miss it. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I, I Silent think that, Hill Two. It I feel like it de- probably deserved a remake. I think oh, that yeah. run that rings so. That's an old low. old game. That game is ancient. I think the lack of creativity just rings hollow in given the couple of months we've had, you know, like like Zelda, which I still can't believe yeah. you guys haven't played. Echoes yeah, I know. There's, right? a, there's a couple there's a couple companies that are still trying their best to put games most of them, I would say. Yeah. There's the, a well, triple A space. Wise. So the re- no the reality is it's just a mixture. We're getting yeah. a lot of really good stuff, but we're also get a, getting a lot of not good stuff now as well. There's just more money in games yeah. than there's ever been before. For every so you're gonna yeah. get good game that's like worth playing, we're gonna get the third time Naughty Dog has remade The Last of Us, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, Last of Us I, again, that was remade to probably tie into the first season of the show. So it's all Is I don't know. Like I, I don't a remaster, I think it two I've two just got like a touch up for uh, for PS5, yeah, it's like a remaster. Man, I I miss when Naughty not Dog a released released games and not just a remaster. Yeah, I, I mean it. Naughty Dog's I miss, games, like, Naughty Dog's are, games, they're coming, they're coming. It's just they should have they should have been here by now. Yeah, they but, they should, but they're not here. And use the dev resources on remastering The Last of Us for the third time. See, I don't think that's that's not a realistic thing. Like the remaster teams are not the same team that's making. The, the new games they're just not the same people. yeah i'm sure they have it's a newer totally different skill set i'm sure they have newer devs working on the remasters just to sort of familiarize them with the technology that's being used i mean look at uh we can't I'll, we can't know for sure but yeah. i'll talk about zelda again one of the reasons honestly that <laughs> uh echoes of wisdom is probably not terribly technically sound is uh it's made by grezzo the people who made ocarina of time 3d uh, Majora's Mask 3D, and I believe the Link's Awakening remake. Yeah, and now Nintendo, they've got to make their first original Zelda game. It's weird that Nintendo's the team that's willing to hand a beloved IP to just someone who's unproven and say, "Hey, make a game in it. We'll see what happens." I mean, they they were not untested. They they've done their three remakes now yeah. that were critically acclaimed and beloved. Right, but, but to go from did... remake to like a new entry, that's a that's a yeah. huge jump. And I it is, I would argue I... they succeeded largely. Yeah. There was no way it was hands off though, you know. Yeah. Miyamoto yeah. would oh, of course. And, and <laughs> Miyamoto sure would there. never. Mm-hmm. Aonuma would never. It, we're in a weird place where Nintendo is willing to hand their IP to people who are interested because you got the Crypt and the Necrodancer dev what dev 7 years ago doing a Zelda not doing, it's been done. Well, yeah. It came out like Seven it years was still ago. done seven years ago, but my point still stands. That's a Nintendo, a heavily guarded Nintendo IP. Yeah, it is. Yeah, especially with like things like uh, the if Mario you movie, told a right? Kid in the nineties, that Nintendo's giving their their Zelda IP to an in a, like a two person dev team to make a game in it, they wouldn't believe you. Yeah, times have changed. Times have changed so radically in the gaming landscape. But yeah, I guess uh, so. I I do want to talk about Silent Hill too. But just really quickly, let's touch over Zelda. I am gonna play this game. I'm gonna play it on Switch too, <laughs> if that console ever comes out. Which, it by will the way, not run better. I'm I'm 100 percent certain if any game is going to get a if any game is going to get passed over on a boost on Switch Two hardware, it's this one. It's just because there's no excuse for it to run like this on Switch. Does it have an unlocked frame rate? I think so. Then then it'll run better on Switch Two. Because okay. there'll just be a, a brute force kind of thing happening okay. there. Yeah, it's a sub thirty unlocked frame. Rate. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'll take a solid thirty. I, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, I, I imagine it's locked at thirty. Uh, also, I, I do want to point out we were so confident in in getting a Switch Two reveal, and oh, it has in been September. Yeah, it's mid October and nothing. We have an I alarm a- clock. Yeah. <laughs> we have an alarm clock. An alarm I was alarm certain alarm. that we were going to get it in September, dude. I was as certain as you were that we were going to get it in 2023. And Nintendo could not care less. No, <laughs> How they, certain we are. We have we care. have the uh th- there was a leak recently. We have the name of it. It's like ounce or something. That's the code name. Yeah, all yeah, these hardware the code name. Yeah. yeah, the consoles have weird code names. Ounce. What could that even mean? I don't. It's probably its yeah. weight. 
It's going to be like a smartphone. <laughs> An ounce. <laughs> they did, uh, just, just so we're clear, and there's no way this is the Switch 2. The Switch 2 hardware already exists, but uh, Nintendo did file a VR patent uh, like I last saw week. That, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but again. I, the dream's a lot. Well, the dream, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Lobo okay, two. so Zelda, I'm going to play Zelda at some point. And I, Zelda's I just, really good, it, but I, I, I haven't finished it because these games are coming oh, out Oh, you haven't even fast. finished it? Wow. No, okay. I'm most of the way through it. I think I probably have two dungeons left if I had to guess. I know I have one left, and then there's, it's probably the finale after that because I filled out most of the map, but I, I don't know for certain. Yeah. And, and it's like an evening. I, it would take me an evening to finish right. these game, this game. These dungeons are very short. But Sparking Zero keeps calling my name. Yeah, Sparking Zero, and I also want to say, Bloober Team delivered with Silent Hill with 2 Silent Remake. Hill. I know, I'm shocked. And it uh, looks but it's apparently great. really good. And I really, really want to play it. It is one of those games... So I like to... M- me and my sister have a tradition of playing like horror games together, so I'm probably going to wait to play this one with her, but on PS5 Pro, ideally, because they already confirmed that one's getting a PS5 Pro patch. But... It, from what I've seen, man, it just looks like they nailed it, which uh, no one was betting on them. So I'm, I'm very glad to see them kind of step up and yeah, I was a hater. Prove people wrong. Yeah, I got proven wrong that it was actually good. Broken clocks right twice a day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hope this is a case of them just improving and not a one-off thing. I mean, but... we get handed an IP like Silent Hill, you lock in, you know. Yeah, you gotta, you either nail it or you're gonna get ridiculed for the rest of your life. Well, he, well, they're kind of in a great position now to remake other Silent Hill games. They've proved they can do it with two. They could remake the original. Others? Okay. Is there anything other than the original that anyone cares about? I thought it was uh, just the first two that were... Silent Hill 3 exists, right? But I don't know if it's as beloved it as, as 1 and 2. But I guess they could just make a new one, too. We, we could finally get PT or whatever. Yeah, PT. <laughs> uh, maybe. If oh, my God. Imagine the PT remake. PT remake. <laughs> They'll do well, it. There's money there. Bloober team and Konami, or not Konami, uh, Kojima. It's it's awful that I like mix up those two words because of how bad the blood is. But I super get the like the name Konami Kojima and Kojima and Konami yeah. mixed up. But I hate that um, I do that. The I haven't. I've been trying to avoid as much footage of Silent Hill Two as I can. I know it has some kind of visual problems. They're stuttering on PC because of Unreal, which is kind of just a given at this point. It's par for the course if you use Unreal. Yeah. And the game kind of struggles on console because uh, the consoles just can't really keep up. PS5 Pro will help with that. But it seems like genuinely scary. Like I've been reading impressions from people I trust and they say things like, yeah, Resident Evil 4 is not even remotely scary or resident evil isn't even remotely scary compared to silent hill like silent hill taps into a much deeper horror than the resident evil games which is cool right i never really thought confirm that yeah i never really thought resident evil was scary with the exception of a you know a few scenes remember the did you play eight no i only played seven okay there were there was a there was a part was, of eight that baby. struck the fear of God in me. Yeah, it was the baby. Yeah. I've seen the baby. It yeah. was, the baby's a little scary. Yeah, yeah, that was terrifying. But and Silent seven, Hill gets there in your g- head generally more. some scary parts in seven. But yeah, yeah, I'm excited to get spooked by Silent Hill too because uh, I've built up quite a tolerance now to horror related things. I've been watching lots of horror movies for fun, and I, I I'm excited to potentially get spooked again. I didn't finish... I only played Silent Hill 1, and I played it on my PS Vita. And it still scared me. Like, even on that tiny screen nice. in handheld, it was still scaring me a little bit. Uh, I, I am curious... Even a perfect modern remake, I don't know if it could be as scary, because I genuinely just think that PS1 aesthetic lends itself to horror so well. So, mm, But I, yeah. I can't say that for sure, because I haven't played it. But I, I'm a big proponent of once you see the monster, it's not scary anymore. And so I don't, and and like the muddy PS1 graphics mean you never really see the monster. Yeah, kinda. your imagination can kind of yeah. fill in the gaps. Yeah, there's a lot of imagination going on. So, but that doesn't mean they can't do it. And everybody else seems to think they did a good job. My favorite uh, YouTube essayist, Jacob Geller, actually uh, did some work on this game. He was a uh, oh wow, what's the consultant? He was yeah. a consult. He was consulted, which apparently he consults on 
games all the time and i just didn't know that he doesn't talk about it on the channel much oh that's cool yeah i i'm excited to finally play this game i'm probably gonna play it at the end of the month and uh hopefully bloober team can keep it up maybe remake another silent hill game i just can't afford all these games man 70 dollars for silent Hill. yeah another another banger to play yeah a hundred dollars for dragon ball 70 dollars for re fantasia which i'm dying to yeah, play I, right okay, now. okay let's talk about that next metaphor re fantasia it came out it has over 90 on metacritic it basically is another persona game in all but name and Again, the, all the impressions I'm seeing are like, this is an extremely addicting Persona-like game. And I'm like, that's absolutely not what I what needed to hear because no. uh, <laughs> that's I two don't Persona have games this year. Yeah, Persona 3 Reload and now Metaphor, both just hitting insanely hard. And But this game, right, like Persona 3 was kind of constrained by being Persona 3, right? You couldn't yeah, really... the first. Yeah. You know, it, it was still a Persona 3 first and foremost. This is atlas post persona 5 royal right so right. i can only imagine taking the improvements from persona 5 applying them to a new persona like game and now we have metaphor and uh man i i really want to play it there were there were a couple times earlier this week where i almost just caved and bought it but i was just like no i right now just just in general in my life i don't have time for a hundred hour jrpg i just don't so I'm I don't have time for a 20 hour game <laughs> right now. Yeah. I'm Same. just going to hold off and play it maybe early next year, but the it's getting harder and harder to resist. I just know it's going to be one of those games that I play a year late and I'm like head and hands like, oh, that would have been game of the year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it's if it's a Persona 5 caliber game, which it seems like it is easily yeah. a game of the year front runner. Like, I mean, I actually that's like just the caliber of those games. I might actually pick it up for my Steam Deck. I'm traveling in uh oh Persona, I'm traveling at the end of the month and it's, playing an it's, Atlas RPG handheld imagine. is some of the greatest yeah. magic in gaming. It's it's great. And I hear it runs great on Steam Deck because it, hey, this game released on PS4. Games are still releasing yeah. on PS4. Yeah. yeah Which I, is fine for this kind of game. Like I, I will it's, say it's though, turn based RPG. It being but. an Atlas game. I mean, you just know maybe a year or two down the line, they're going to be like re Metaphor, Refantasio, Reloaded or something. Reloaded, you know, yeah, like that's... it's going to be the definitive version with another 50 hours of story or whatever. I'm so angry. It's, I mean, I don't know. It's Atlas. It's probably going to happen. I've, I mean, I've never gotten to play any of those because I'm not going to replay your 200 hour RPG. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. I mean, I, I really want to play Persona 5 Royal. Yeah, but, but how long have you wanted to? It's been out for like four yeah, I've been years. I've been wanting to for a while. It's just hard to, it's hard to replay a hundred hours to get another yeah. fifty. <laughs> yeah, it's unthinkable to me. I would I would argue, especially yeah. like the the economy of time that I live in right now. Like, there's no way. Yeah, but we... metaphor. Yeah, I might just bite the bullet and play this version of metaphor and just be like, okay, if there's a better version that comes out later, more power to you. But this is my experience with metaphor but yeah, yeah I, I just i want to play it i i just think it's wild we live in a time where there's so many games coming out that we need to play that we that no one ever has time for it and i mean even 2023 which we we talked about so much on the show about how much of a an insane year it was with uh Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate. This too. might Zelda. sound wrong, but i yeah. i want another covid so i can catch up again <laughs> uh, like, don't don't it's say so, that. No world as so fragile bad. as ours. Yeah. But, I mean, but I, 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 get I, get, I get what you're saying, though. Like, you yeah. just, we need more time to be created out of nothing, which is what happened during COVID. Yeah, we started the podcast again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, as we, as we roll into winter here, I think my social life is going to peter out and I'll have more time. But my, my other, my other commitments are not going away. And gaming, gaming is falling to the wayside lately. But, Meta I mean, regardless of whether we play it now or later, like I'm determined to eventually play this game. This is not going to be a game where I forget about it and be like, okay, sorry, I just missed it. Right. At one, at a certain point, I I have to play this game. I will play Metaphor. But yeah, it's not even the only big RPG out or coming out in October. Or no, that no Mario and Luigi. Mario and Luigi November. is November. Yeah. Okay. So, so a month I don't apart. know if there's any much more about Mario and Luigi you can say yet because. It looks good. It looks really good. It's not out yet. I think uh, 
Paper Mario Thousand Year Door really whet my appetite for this kind of game, and we're just going to get more of it with this Mario and Luigi game. I was smart. I don't have to pay for this one. I bought uh I bought the hundred dollar oh the voucher Nintendo game voucher for uh, Echoes of Wisdom, so I got this one on credit. <laughs> I don't oh have nice. To pay again. Oh Nintendo, it's uh, doing goofy things like game vouchers, but oh, I, hey, I guess it's cool. Yeah, it's at twenty dollars off a seventy dollar game. You don't you won't catch me. Is it seventy dollars? I don't know. I didn't look, but I, I got twenty dollars off. I, I got Tears of the Kingdom with a voucher, and it was seventy dollars. So oh nice. Yeah, so yeah, I'm I'm excited for this game, and uh, it'll be good. It's good that it's coming out in November because I feel like everything else is coming out in October. Yeah, yeah isn't um, there Call of Duty is out? Call of Duty is very soon, like within days, I think coming. It out. It was within a week of. Oh my god, Sparking Zero hasn't even been out a week. That's crazy. By the way, I'm sorry. <laughs> Going to talk about Sparking Zero a little more. <laughs> In the fir- within the first twenty four hours of launch, it sold over three million copies. Disgusting it, numbers. Yeah. So this 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 game, it set the world on fire sales wise. It's the best. It's going to be the best selling uh, Dragon Ball game for sure. Yeah, easily. It's probably I mean, going to th- be the best selling anime game. I mean, just to put this in perspective, three million in less than twenty four hours is selling faster than Sony's fastest selling first party game, which is Spider Man Two. Wow. I, mean, th- this, I didn't know that. This is this is an insane success, especially for something like Dragon Ball. Th- I mean, to have I mean, this level of ubiquity Dragon in, in video like, game form, right? Yeah, I mean, it's always been big, but like, it, it, yeah, everyone's Go- buying. Goku and is this Mickey game. Mouse. Like, yeah. Goku is the biggest character in anime by a lot. Right. Okay. That's that's all I wanted to say. Otherwise, uh, I will get sucked into another rabbit hole and talk yeah. about Dragon no, Ball. We could do a whole other episode. But I, I also wanted to point out, okay, another game that I'm very much looking forward to is out in a day or two, Super Mario Party Jamboree. So reviews are out for this game. People are calling it the best Mario Party yet. Uh, really? I, I love Mario Party. Mario Party has always been a part of my multiplayer gaming growing up. And this game is adding a lot of interesting modes. It's got like an eight player co-op mode. It's adding a 20 player mode online where you can I play t- with 20 friends uh, in unique game modes, play no mini game. games w- with 20 no friends, 20 friends, right? But you can fill it in with other people online, Yeah, but your two but, friends and 17 but, strangers. No, that's, isn't that amazing though? Like, yeah, I, ca- I can gather my friends. You could gather your friends. We could all just hop into a game of Mario party together. And then we won't have any friends at the end of it. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah, that's Uh, so true. Yeah. Wars will be started over this game. Yeah. 20 person Mario Party. But I I just love that they're taking the core thing that makes Mario Party great and just pushing that to the extreme. 20 player Mario Party minigames. Just, I can't even. Yeah. Design wise, how those work. Yeah, how does like the board, the board work? I how the board sit work? And watch nineteen turns happen. I'm I'm sure it must be concurrent. Yeah, because otherwise there's no way <laughs> you go through twenty people. I have to pick this sequentially. Up. I, I really liked Super Mario Party, and that's like not I a did popular too. opinion. I, I liked Super Mario Party, and I liked Mario Party Superstars both. I didn't. That was the one that was like kind of remakey, right? Yeah, Maybe. Superstars was the remakey one. Okay, I liked Super Mario Party. I thought it was fun. It didn't have enough boards, but it was fun. But and, everybody it, and it played I know, with mechanics in interesting ways too, with the unique dice and all that. Yeah, the people I know that were Mario Party diehards did not like it. They wanted their GameCube and N sixty four Mario Party. Well, back. that's what the next Mario Party was for, right? That kind uh, yeah, of brought, super, brought that but, uh, back. I'm surprised to see Jamboree is so well liked, though. I hope I, I'm interested yeah. to see what like the wider opinions outside of critics are. Yeah, I mean, I'm really excited for this game. This is absolutely a game I'm going to be playing with like family at Thanksgiving. And, uh, man, it's just uh, another one on the exceedingly long list. Are there 20 playable characters in Super Mario Party? I guess I guess there will be now. Yeah, there has to be. <laughs> yeah. Smash I mean, in, 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 in Super Mario Party, there were a lot of characters, like 20 plus, right? Because you yeah. had all those different you characters had Monty and the Mole, dice. And all. Yeah, yeah, there were a lot of characters. Goomba. Yeah. But... Yeah, I, I'm excited to see this as like the culmination of Mario Party up to this point because Nintendo definitely lost their way with Mario Party for a while there, but it yes. definitely looks like they're back, especially with the previous two releases I thought were really strong. I know Super Mario Party was more controversial, but 
And now with Jamboree, it, it really seems like they get it now and are are firing on all cylinders with Mario Party. But I yeah, I did to see it. Uh, you brought up Black Ops Six. Is this a, is this okay? So it's Mike like Connor, is anyone interesting in in this Call of Duty game? It's coming to Game Pass. I'll probably. It depends on how much hard drive space I have open or SSD space. Hundred plus gigs, right? It'll probably run off a hard drive, won't it? I can put it on my hard drive and just sit through wait, load screens. Um, if it's compatible with that, I I might play the campaign. I don't think I know yeah. anybody who's gonna want to play. It. If my buddy Tyler wants to play the multiplayer for an hour or something, just because it's on Game Pass, I'll do that. But I'm not excited for it. I'm just kind of we we've played yeah. Fortnite to death. I think um, I'm a. L- I'm a little warmer than you. I'm not excited by any means, but this game is made by Treyarch, who make my favorite Call of Duty games. See, I'm a certified uh, Call of Duty hater. I've never played a Call of Duty game I didn't hate. Like, okay, ever. yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I I think it'll be among the better Call of Duties, just based off previews alone. I know they're doing that new omnidirectional movement thing, which is a unique mechanical change especially for a game like call of duty that it's just like the same year after year what's that even mean so you can move because in call of duty you sprint forward and change the direction but in in this game and i'm probably not going to describe it well but you can move in any direction even if you're facing a different direction oh so it it's it kind of okay. changes up the mechanics of the actual movement and and Sounds shooting like it has and all a very that. high skill ceiling, yeah. I don't I don't know. I I mean the and again, like I'm just saying it from a very kind of outsider's perspective. I haven't looked too much into it, but at least it's something, right? Something that they're some core mechanic of Call of Duty they're they're changing cuz Call of Duty doesn't really change that much year to year. Very stagnant franchise, yeah. But I I do have fun with the Call of Duty campaigns. Uh, I think last year's game didn't have a campaign or barely had a campaign or something, which is largely the reason I skipped it. I didn't play last year's Call of Duty, but it seems like this year's Call of Duty will have all the modes. It'll have the campaign. It'll have the zombies. I really enjoy the zombies as well. And the multiplayer and Warzone, which is their battle royale. So it seems like the complete package. They're not skimping on anything this time. So I might check it out. Mike, do you have any interest in this? I have no interest in Call of Duty anymore. That's fair. Okay, another game that is also partially out now, Life is Strange Double Exposure. So the first two episodes are out now if you pay for the deluxe edition or whatever, which I'm not going to do. I'm just going to wait for the full game to release because I'm not in too much of a hurry to play this game. But if you're really craving that Life is Strange story, you can play a good chunk of it now. But the full game will be out by the end of the month. And I'm really excited for this one. Again, this is one where I was really attached to Max's story in the original Life is Strange. Really cool. It's really cool to see that character return in this game. And this is another game where uh, I I played the original with my sisters. They were huge fans of this game, right? Like, especially my younger sister, my youngest sister who doesn't even play video games. She loved Life is Strange and she played it many times actually so this is a game that will get uh, a lot of play in my in my family's household so excited to try this one out i'm a huge life is strange one fan and i have not dipped a toe back into the series at all since then i don't think yeah i played life is strange 2 and it was good but nowhere near as good as the first one in my opinion I played a actually. <laughs> I made a huge life decision based on a Life is Strange game. I played a <laughs> a little bit of True Colors, and uh, I don't know if you played it at all, Amid. Uh, same as you, just like maybe twenty thirty minutes of it. That beautiful walkable uh, Colorado oh, yeah. town was like, yeah, God, I gotta, I need that for me. And then I moved <laughs> somewhere kind of like that, and I was like, yeah. I don't really need this game anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. But, I mean, everything is pointing to this game being really good. I mean, it looks great, too. I remember the original Life is Strange kind of looked awful. <laughs> I mean, it had its art style, but it was just kind of janky looking would, as well. I wouldn't say... This, this might this, just be pure nostalgia. This, like, th- I like the way Life is Strange 1 looks. Okay, that's fine. But if you've seen trailers for this game, it just takes that art style to the next level. Like, it looks really, really, really good. I'll have to watch. So, I, I don't think I've seen it. Uh, 
and probably better to not watch a trailer because this is like a story based game. Yeah, no any spoilers. But how, when does this come out again? What's the date? Do we know? Oh man, it's it's like the last week of October, I think. Uh, so yeah, so, very soon. Yeah, it's it is this month. But yeah, another game that I'm gonna buy in October. There are, are so many of those. The 29th of October. Yeah. Not good reviews. Is it just for the first two episodes? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't trust this. This is a weird Google autofill. I can't find where it's getting it from. The, the like, okay, Google yeah. about says it's a six out of ten, which is like, I mean, that whatever. That doesn't mean anything yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting AI'd right now. I think. Yeah. So yeah, excited for that game. And I, I thought think we were AI. Yeah, we are AI. In yeah, many such sure. cases. Many such cases. Briefly going to shout out Sonic Shadow Generations as well. I'm going to pick up this game and play it uh, because it is a brand new game for me. Talked about it many times on the show, so I don't know if we need to belabor that wait point. To, but. I got to wait to hear what you say about it before I pick it up. I am sad because I think I'm going to be missing. This is like a playable shadow model based on the original shadow if you pre-order. Okay. And I would like to have that, but also I'm on PC, so I can probably just mod it in. And I'm not going to pre-order this game. I I know better than to pre-order. A oh Sonic yeah, I'm not. Game. I'm not it pre-ordering still a Sonic be trash. Game. There's yeah. no way. Yeah, <laughs> There's absolutely still no so way. So much they could mess up. But I think that covers all the fall games. I kind of wanted to talk about. Most of them are happening this month in October. A lot of them have already happened. A lot of them are happening in the weeks in the next week or two. So, are there any other games that are coming out around this time period that you guys want to highlight before we move on? I I've lost track of how many games are coming out this year it's so many i want i want to talk so the factorio so dlc a little more uh sure yeah because i mean you said you, that that's coming out six days from now that you, might be a next year thing for me i think it's you just, you should not play the dlc first you should play vanilla factorio first oh i sort of just first. assumed that the v- vanilla would like lead into mm-mm Oh, it's no. like two separate things. It's two separate things. I it's see. A mo- okay. it's, it's a pack that changes some things about the game. Yeah. And and it's, I mean, it's both. It is Factorio 2.0, which is like a new feature set that is going to be available in Vanilla Factorio that I think is free to everyone. And then there's also the Space Age expansion that is going to have other planets you can go to. And the tech tree is going to be different. And oh okay yeah, yeah 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 i just assumed it was like a natural continuation of no nah, i don't think Factorio. so i haven't watched any of the videos because i don't want to be spoiled so i can't say for certain but I, i'm so excited one of the big things they're adding that's going to change everything is elevated rail lines so you can have grade separated tracks which just totally changes everything about train intersections that we have now because everything in factorio before this was two-dimensional you could not have any verticality at all uh, other than underground belts but it with your rails you could not have any verticality and now you can and so it just completely changes the whole game and i think uh there's going to be more incentive to build bigger and bigger factories because you don't have to have a very big factory to beat vanilla factorio but space age clearly is that's going to be different there's so many new mechanics each new planet has like a cool mechanic. Like one of them, I guess, is just covered in scrap. And so your entire factory is refining that scrap. You don't actually get any raw resources. You're you're just mm-hmm. finding parts in the scrap and having to sort through them and sort through all the waste and everything. That's like such an interesting challenge. I guess one of them is like all liquids. <laughs> like the whole planet, it's a really hot planet. So everything's a liquid now. <laughs> and that's just really exciting. I'm it sounds like it. it's just introducing a lot of uh, variety. Yeah. I think uh, you'll be playing it when it comes out, so I'm excited to hear your thoughts. But yeah, with all the things happening this year, especially like around this time, this month, going into the end of the year, it I do think it'll probably be a, a later thing for me. Oh, by the way, totally forgot to mention, Alan Wake 2 DLC also coming out. Oh my god. Oh right. my um, god, you're right. And, That's uh, soon. Is yeah, it? that that's soon, and that is something that I think I'll try to squeeze in, like probably December time. It's a short I, game. You can. I, I'm gonna be able that. to because I haven't played Alan Wake two yet, so I'm just gonna play like all of it in one go. Um, but that's just another, that's just another bullet point on the exceedingly long list of uh things that I need to play. It's such a good game, dude. It's. I'm excited. I might have to replay 
there's no time. The, the only question I have is, I, the logical person in me wants to play Alan Wake 1 before 2, but I keep you hearing do. you don't really have to do that. I would, I would go as far as to say you probably shouldn't. Really? I, I didn't. I have not played Alan Wake 1. I like sat down and started to, and that game... Not very good. Not, I, I just... It, it's so dated. It's so dated yeah. to the point that it's hard to come back to. I mean, did it like impact your enjoyment of the story at all? Of the second game? Yeah. No. Not not even a little bit. It's okay. What happens in Alan Wake One is simultaneously confusing enough that a lot of people who played it are going into Alan Wake Two without really understanding, but also the cliff notes of it are simple enough that you can get caught up to those people that are only a little bit confused. Pretty okay. quickly. Okay. So I probably will end end up doing that because, uh, like we've acknowledged during the show, time is not a limitless yeah. resource so just watch a youtube video that catches yeah. you up on what happened in one and, and i know with remedy games like there's layers right like there are people who could just play alan wick 2 and be satisfied if you really want the full alan wick experience you play one and two if you really want control. the full remedy experience you play alan wick one two control and all the dlc and, and quantum somehow break. you connect all those things together actually to get everything yeah. you have to play max Payne as well <laughs> yeah yeah it's just, but that's that's too yeah. a little too far for me that's max like, Payne. there's a work. character so it's it's messy because Remedy doesn't own Max Payne anymore, but the cop you what is her name? I can't remember the main character's name in Alan Wake Two. The 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 FBI agent you play as, but her I can't her partner is Sam Lake is played by Sam Lake looks like Sam Lake, and is Max Payne who is also looks exactly like Sam Lake. I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and like, it clearly is supposed to be Max Payne, but like an alternate I reality okay. version of him. Yeah. Okay. Well, regardless, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be happy just playing Alan Week Two in the DLC, and I thought that was it, but there's another game I have to mention because <laughs> I'm getting a Discord ad for it right now as we speak, which is kind of really funny. But Diablo Four: Vessel of Hatred oh. is also out now. It also got really great reviews. Yeah, apparently and, it's that game's like fire again. And I really want to play it because you know me and Diablo. Once I get hooked on that, it's just like you everything finish. else falls. Yeah, away. there yeah. will be no. That's why other I'm game. not gonna. I'm yeah. probably not gonna check it out this year. But it is a game that I want to check out maybe next year. But I'm mad at Diablo because I know you did, are. We don't have to go through that again. Well, no, <laughs> I'm mad at Diablo because they didn't sell it on Steam, and now they do sell it on Steam. And I can't transfer my purchase to Steam, so I have to have the stupid Battle.net launcher on my Steam Deck if I want to play Diablo on my Steam Deck, when now you can just get it on Steam and you don't need any of that crap. I see. And it's Yeah, that, that is annoying. It's extremely annoying, because it was like not horrific to get it to work, but it was a pain in the butt, and now you just don't need to do it, and nobody's going to help me with that. <laughs> nobody's going to yeah. make me not have to do it the hard way anymore. I also just don't like the game enough to... Yeah, I actually returned to it. I don't remember if I talked about it on the show. I actually went back and I mm. had fun with it again, more so w without any f without any friends to keep up yeah. with. I was actually having a better time with it. Yeah, but. I don't know, man. Diablo four, Diablo in general for me just hits some kind of primal dopamine big. kind of thing for me. Yeah, so I yeah, I'm looking forward to eventually playing it. I'm very intentionally not playing it now because I know my life will basically fall to shambles if i do so avoiding yeah. it for now but we'll play it later that's what i'm okay. afraid is going to happen to me when factorio comes out <laughs> yeah, i'm gonna I, i'm actually good on momentum i've been going to the gym i've been keeping up with everything yeah and the second factorio comes out it's just gonna fall away test of will <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay any other games we want to highlight coming out around october before we move on i got nothing I got nothing. All right, let's talk about what we're playing. I think uh, I'm good because I've only been playing Dragon Ball and I've kind of already talked about the points I want to talk about earlier in the video or, or earlier in the podcast. So, yeah, I've only been playing Sparking Zero. I, I just I can't say enough. I finally got good. I was so bad last week and it took me like it takes effort. Hours, it takes effort there. to get I, good at this the, game. The story stuff is easy for me now. But it's really nice. rewarding when you are good at this game. You can basically just recreate Dragon Ball battles when you're good at this game. It's 
It's uh, it's really fun. I want to shout out the YouTubers covering this game too. The one I've been watching is Afro Sinju, and the dude I think oh that's he's how it's he's great. Yeah. Oh my god, he he is so his excitement is so contagious. Yeah, no, he's a he's a huge Dragon Ball fan, huge Naruto fan. He makes really good content for both. Yeah. Yeah, can't say good, enough good things about Sparking Zero. We'll probably talk about it again. We're we're talking about game of the year. So yeah, when we do the bracket. Mike, are you playing I have anything? been playing more Abiotic Factor, and let me tell you, it becomes a horror game very quickly without you even realizing it. Like a hard horror game? The comedy's gone? The comedy's kind of still there, but it does get a little intense. So, I think when I last talked to about it, I was still in, or I'd just gotten to manufacturing, right? Like the second yes, area. That, that sounds right, yeah. So, so, I know it was the second area. Yeah, yeah. so... It's kind of boring. You get shot at by guys with guns that speak Latin. That's whatever. But then you get to the Cascade Labs, which is where they store all like the weird stuff. And you encounter this, this enemy type that only follows one player. Only one player can see it. Uh, is it the same oh. player? It is the same player. So only one person can see it. And it goes away if you stare at it. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, so for the first little bit that you're dealing with it, it's kind of annoying. You're kind of like, oh god, oh god. Then it just gets annoying, and then you find a way to deal with it, and it just disappears, and you farm it like the rest of it. Yeah. And labs was labs was just us running through it, going through the motions. It's just a little weirder. Then, then we get to the security sector, which is the fourth area in the game, and where we kind of stopped recently. There, there's no lights. There's no power. It's pitch black. There is one enemy in this sector that is worthwhile. And it it stomps really loudly. It speaks in gibberish. And if it grabs you, it teleports you to a completely different dimension. Oh, no. <laughs> and mind you, it's pitch black. And if you, and if you harm it in any way, you just make it mad. <laughs> you can't, well, you can make it disappear. Now that we've completed the area, we can deal with it and make it disappear. But before you start dealing with it, before you actually finish that sector, there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to run. You just have to run away. I really like that in horror games. I, I know yes. Resident Evil we, plays with that a lot. We weren't ready for it. We weren't ready for the game to suddenly become a, a horror game. I want to play this. I'm sure it was also like really funny too. It was like so it was scary, but like they're like, all just like panicking and dealing panicking. with it. Yeah, but uh, that's great. Yeah. Then we got to the Hydra plant and got sidetracked because uh, there they added an update that added pilgrims, <laughs> pilgrims that, that are doing a weird cult. Like do you know, like the the belted hat and black black yeah, yeah. pilgrims. Yeah, yeah. Those are now in the game in a portal world. Which portal worlds are where you uh, are like alternate dimensions, I guess, where they grab all these anomalies from. So now there's one full of pilgrims, and uh, they hurt. They hurt a lot. And they have this weird cult that strung up the research team and killed them for being witches. Uh, is so there the, like an overall story that <laughs> that's being is. told here? Because it um, seems very... <laughs> so what happened, what has happened is there's something in there that this initiative uses portals to go to different dimensions to catalog all these weird things and everything. It's just a bunch of scientists. Then this organization called The Order, which is the guys who speak Latin and shoot guns at you, come in, invade the laboratory, and smash the lens, the dark lens that they used, to make sure the portals were stable and didn't just go off willy-nilly and let things from other dimensions come in unsupervised. They smash it. The result is, uh, the facility is now broken. It's just falling apart. All these monsters are coming in, all these things are coming in, all the scientists are dead, the security sector is being stro stalked by the Grim Reaper of all things. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know I what's happening this. in the hydro plant because we haven't gotten there yet. We haven't really. What's the release there. timeline on this? I have no idea. I have... I saw. I mean, this game just seems like a lot of fun. I saw Northern Lion playing this with a bunch of friends, and it just seemed like such a good time. They were all laughing and freaking out. It's just yeah. When games like this come out, I'm always just like, yeah, I sure wish I could play it with people, and then I just never. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Make the effort to find people to play it with and it kind of just goes by 
Or you, or you convince people to buy it and then never play them. That's what I did. I convinced mm. people to buy it and then we've been <laughs> playing it. I'm still mad about uh, Valheim. Valheim? <laughs> Listen, I still need uh, to finish my Valheim. twenty precious dollars lost to the wind because Amid never bothered to play the game. It's coming. We'll buy you some Chick Fil A coming sometime. out at some point. <laughs> I keep forgetting it's not out. Yeah, I think they just yeah. Added, that's like, crazy, me, dude. Wish. These games that are out, quote unquote, for years without actually being out. Yeah, Valheim's still not out. A Biotic Factor says it's only going to be in early access for eight to twelve months, so that would have it coming out next May Probably. sometime. Yeah. I could, I could see it. They've been adding updates pretty quickly. It looks so good. Yeah, it is. They, they nailed so the art style. They did. It feels like I'm playing a Half Life game with all the enhancements and frame rate issues of a modern game. <laughs> all the frame rate issues of a modern game. It's beautiful. I love that. All right. <laughs> Anything else? No, nothing else to say about it. All right. I think that's going to do it for us this week. Thank you all for listening. You can follow us at Ad Podcast Game Talk on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Please like, rate, and review us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, or any other podcast services you use. Click the link in the description to join our Discord and talk to us there. Thank you, Connor and Mike. Yeah. See you guys next week. See you next week. Bye.